Um, Dr. Santos, you can start your presentation. So, good morning, everyone. So, good morning, our dear consultants, fellow residents, and then uh, our dear interns. So, today I'm going to discuss my case presentation on child and adolescent psychiatry entitled Prohibited. For the objectives, this is to present a case of an adolescent with use of multiple psychoactive substances and to discuss the factors related to substance use in children and adolescents and the neuropsychoanalytic model of addiction. So this is a case of Chris, 17 years old, male, a Filipino, an Islam, um, a Muslim, a grade 11 student from Davao City. So he was seen in our institution at the out outpatient department outpatient department on September 24, 2021. So he came in due to irritable behavior. So kailangan daw ko og vitamins para sa panglawas og high. In combined words, dili siya katulog, wala na daw, walo na kaadlaw na sunod-sunod. Irritable na kayo siya og mulikoy og istorya. So for the premorbid personality, he is a silent, uh, shy individual wherein he would keep his problems to himself. So he would not con initiate conversations unless he's comfortable with them already. And he would just stay quiet, smile, or say a few words because of, of fear of being embarrassed. So, but this did not hinder him in making friends as they would approach him first because of, because of his kind and pleasant nature. So he tries to overcome this through humor by telling jokes whenever he starts to communicate uh, conversations. So... When not in school, he spends most of his time with his older brother and then cousins, and they would usually play computer games, basketball, or just sitting somewhere, hanging out. So for the history of uh, cousin illness, so I'm going to show you the, uh, the temporality of symptoms also and also with his substance use. So three years prior to admission, he started to get stressed with increasing demands of school. So he was started to go out of their house to play computer games or basketball to relax. So he does not want to stay at home because of frequent alter altercations with his older brother. So there he met his friends who would invite him to hang out. So he would refuse them because he is uncomfortable and has fears of being embarrassed during conversation. So despite several the few cells he eventually joined so that they will not be disappointed. He would be offered to drink alcohol and started to consume around one to two standard drinks of rum or beer. So he doesn't want to stay in an uncomfortable feeling during swallowing. So he gets easily nauseous, at worst vomits whenever he drinks. He could not drink much as he get drowsy, causing him to sleep after a few minutes. His friends would offer cigarettes to counteract the uncomfortable sensation in which he would try after being swayed several times. He would only inhale a few times because it causes him to cough. He doesn't want the side effects he experienced the next day, such as headache, dizziness, or vomiting. Despite this, he would join their company without, without drinking or smoking once, you know, once or twice a month just to listen to their conversations. So over several months, his frequency and amount of drinking and smoking gradually increased. He would now join them once or twice a month to, re to at least once a week. So this happens whenever he feels sad or troubled because of pressures in school or fights with his brother. So whenever he goes with his friends, he feels better and relaxed as if his problems just vanished. His alcohol also increased to about three to five standard drinks of both rum and beer. So during their sessions, he observed himself to be more talkative more confident in handling conversations. He feels good whenever his friends would follow him or laugh at his jokes. He could now tolerate smoking around one to two sticks per session. And then occasionally he would be offered to try cannabis, but would decline because he knew it was prohibited and afraid of its uh, accompanying effects. So one time he could not resist trying methamphetamine. He experienced being relaxed and alert and active. He felt that he has energy to do lots of things and does not, just, does not need to sleep or eat as he does not feel any hunger. So however, its effects does not last and feels the opposite of it afterwards, such as being tired, drowsy, or unmotivated. He did not like, its, like and understand its effects to him 
hence he did not try for the second time. There were no impairment in his functioning. He was performing well in school, can attend the needs of his niece and nephews and girlfriend also. He had no problems with his sleep, has good intake, and able to do activities of daily living. So in the interim, uh, he could still join them at least twice a week or more, especially whenever he feels down. So this pattern continued until nine months prior to consult were in the frequency the amount and types of psychoactive substances he used increase. So he acknowledged it that it became more problematic and was becoming out of hand. It was during the start of the pandemic that he could not meet his friends anymore. So he felt restricted as his routine activities were disrupted. So classes were suspended and then schools were shifted to both virtual and self-learning modules in which he was not familiar with. He could not meet his classmates anymore or his friends. And to make it worse, he experienced more beatings from his elder brother whenever he could not immediately do what he was told to. So he felt sad and started to doubt himself. His problem seemed to magnify. At times, uh, he feels that he's not angry, hungry and preferred to just lie down or sleep because he's not in the mood to do anything. So despite this negative experiences, although with difficulty, he could still do his school activities and other activities of daily living. So he longed to go out to meet his friends, but could not because of several restrictions. It was until four months prior to consult that the restrictions lessened, and he could now finally meet his friends. So it became easier for him to join and, and sell them. He would he refuse whenever invited. And usually joins them about thrice a week. So his alcohol also increased progressively from five to eight standard drinks. Uh, and then we now consume about two to three sticks of cigarettes per session. So in contrary to before, uh, he would now smoke in any time of the day, when, when, especially when he's bored or tired, consuming around four to five sticks per day. So aside from this, he started to take cannabis when offered. Uh, he was curious for a long time regarding regarding its effect, and then hands started to smoke and estimate to finish about one joint per session for, during their gatherings. So he liked its effects and continued using during their gatherings. It causes him to have a sense of well-being, wherein he would feel relaxed and would forget about, it, about his worries. For several months, he would now join his friends at least once or thrice a week, depending whether he has something to do. He was unaware that it already caused problems. Uh, his grades declined because he could not concentrate in making assignments. He would wake up late in the morning because he is drowsy. He could not join family gatherings nor accompany his girlfriend. He could not explain why he continued, but it was as if his body wants it. He denied uh, experiencing tremors, being anxious, uh, perceptual disturbances, or other symptoms whenever he used alcohol, tobacco, or cannabis. So 15, day, 15 days prior to consultation, he was stressed in doing his self-learning modules. So he asked permission from his mother at around five in the evening to go to his girlfriend's house to accompany him in doing his, his assignments. But he did not know what happened, but instead, uh, instead of meeting her, he went to his fir friend's birthday party. Together with his friends and other guests, they initially drank some beer and later started to take rum. So as their conversation grew, they started to drink both types of alcohol almost in unison. He could not recall the exact amount, but estimated that he was able to drink a combined total of around 12, to st 12 standard drinks of rum and beer. So he became confident in handling conversations at the same time relaxed while drinking. Uh, this also caused him to have an uncomfortable sensation in his throat at the same time nauseous, causing him to smoke cigarettes while waiting for his turn drink. He was also offered to smoke cannabis and was passed from one person to another while he smoked his own cigarette. So he estimated that uh, he estimated to have finished around three to four sticks of cigarette while for cannabis he could not quantify it properly because it was passed uh, from one person to another. So later that night, he went home earlier. He still needs to do his assignments while others, while other friends continued. So he felt happy, relaxed, and generally described uh, to be okay. 
So, but he was observed by his mother and other relatives to be restless and irritable. He became talkative and could not be engaged in meaningful conversations as he would answer questions tangentially and incomprehensibly, jumping from one topic to another. He did not sleep and kept on pacing around their house despite him looking tired and drowsy. So his fever persisted for around three to five days. So he caused disturbances in their neighborhood as he kept on going from one house to another, asking them incoherent questions and uh, conversing them incomprehensibly. So this caused impairment in self-care as he would take a bath as he was playing with water and sometimes wearing his clothes inside out uh, because he was in a hurry. So he could not do his obligations in school and could not answer his uh, self-learning modules because he was easily distracted doing lots of things or tasks that he could not finish. So it was around 10 days prior to consult, he was now observed to have signs of aggressions. He became more irritable and seems to be mad, usually gazing sharply to anyone. He would get knives for no reason, but does not point it to anyone. But he would, he would give it to his family when asked to without any form of resistance. So during religious gatherings uh, in their church or mosque, he made several negative comments and believed that their tribe leader or parang imam, imam's teachings was wrong. And he frequently tells his family or people around them that they were oppressed or given unjust treatment. He would not sleep properly at night because he would scan his surroundings, discusses, discussed problems with his relationship as his girlfriend broke up with him during that time. Even after being left by her, he did not cry nor tried to chase her uh, to save her relationship and was described to be expressionless. No consult was done by his family because they believed his condition would spontaneously resolve and most importantly, he could still be talked down. And to ensure his safety, his, his family placed him in a separate room complete with uh, necessary amenities such as comfort room, bed and other things. However, this was locked from the outside. Uh, five days prior to consult, he would now be observed to be talking to himself even though, even though no one was there and would suddenly say statements such as Saliglang mo, saliglang mo, discuss concerns from his family because his condition was, seems to be whirling. We sought consult to a local healer uh, or in rituals and herbal liniments were done to him without any improvement. So they sought to they sought consult to a local physician in which he was prescribed with clonazepam at 2 milligrams at that time. He could now sleep, but his other symptoms persisted. So they were advised one, one of their neighbors to see consult at SPMC APBM and seen at the OPD. So this is the patient's first consult. There were no other consult or him being diagnosed of having any, any psychotic illnesses. So... He has no known comorbidities, although at times he would be slapped or punched by his brother on his head starting at the age of 10 to 11, but there were no incidents of him having loss of consciousness, uh, vomiting, or any other signs of intracranial pressures. So for the family history, uh, hypertension was noted in the paternal side, while for the psychiatric history, noted to have anxiety symptoms uh, in his father and siblings. But uh, in his siblings, they were known to drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes, but uh, their substance use cannot be exactly quantified, but was said not to be excessive. So they would just drink during weekends after work or smoke cigarettes around one to two sticks per day. So it holds majority, it holds true to majority of siblings. So for the developmental milestones, it was unremarkable. Now for the family dynamics, so um, it is mother, so he grew up in a household member of uh, five members, so he, his parents kept on fighting even though before he was born and his, fad, his father had another family despite the approval of the, disapproval of their mother. So 
Afterwards, his father became fully supportive financially, causing their mother to work abroad, and both of them were not there for him and missed several events of his life. So, so he has no interaction with his father and then maintains a neutral or casual relationship with him. So, so he somewhat uh, is, he has a hard feelings for him because he is not, he, his father did not uh, ask approval from their mother, causing them to separate. So he lived in another house after his parents separated. So he would visit them occasionally just to check on them or give money. So while his mother, he describes her as a kind, loving, and respected her. So uh, at times he would, initially he became sad of her going to abroad, but later on um, he understood the reason why her ma his mother went to abroad. So later he became accustomed to it. And then now that now that she is back for good, her focus was on her grandchildren. So he sometimes envious of them, but understood that they needed the care more compared to him. So for his siblings, as you can see, all of them has uh, substance use also. So he maintained a brother. So except his elder brother that would uh, hit him for almost for no reason, especially when his family was not there. So he could not do anything because he was bigger than him and could not hide his and could only hide his emotions to himself. So, but he is not uh, all of his elder brother would pick would pick uh, the young the younger siblings. So the third and fourth brother are usually the target of his beatings. And then he's more close to both of his older brothers, third and fourth, because they were near his age and can easily relate to them. While to his nephews and niece, he's close to them and accompanies them whenever they play. So for the grandparents and relatives, so he's thankful to his grandparents, although an uncle for acting as their second parents. Although they were not perfect, they were there for him, especially to his grandmother and uncle. So they supplemented what his parents would not give. And they took care of them until they were old enough to tend for themselves. And then once in a while, his grandfather, grandmother will check on him if he is doing fine or not. So this is the genogram of our patient. And then, as you can see, initially, uh, he's living together with his grandparents before. And now, they are the siblings staying. Uh, with, uh, they, were tend, uh, they were left tend to themselves one, one, once they were old enough already. So for the prenatal and perinatal history, so he was born to a gravita five mother. And then and was born by a normal spontaneous delivery. He was the jungle, youngest child and a product of a planned pregnancy. So during her his mother's pregnancy, uh, she had frequent um, relation, she has relationship problems with his husband, wherein his husband had another woman causing them to parang fight or argument. So during because of this, uh, she had a stressful pregnancy during that time. So his mother did not have any history of infection, other illnesses, nor any other medications taken during his conception. So his mother was the primary caregiver and breast, breast and was given formula, formula with milk. His father was poorly supportive. The, of them financially, causing their mother to work, and then her attention focused on supporting them. So because of this, uh, he he was he and his siblings was then left to his grandparents. So because of the growing financial burden, uh, his mother worked overseas when he was two years old. So also during this time, uh, his parents and his father lived in another house separate from them. So for the 
for the middle childhood, so he grew up to be a shy, silent, and timid type of child. So most of his siblings are most of his playmates are his brothers or cousins. So he would be teased by them because uh, he plays alone. So he started to go at school at five years old as a kindergarten student. So he was afraid of his teacher and asked his grandmother to be outside of the room. So he would cry, causing him to be further teased by his older siblings, such as being gay, coward, or others. So this persisted for only a few days and eventually resolved after constant reassurances from his grandmother. So his grandparents and other relatives also acted as second parents, wherein they provided his needs um, that, his, uh, that his parents could not give because they were not around. So he would be reprimanded verbally whenever he commits a mistake, or wherein he would only be hit by a belt or a piece of wood if he committed something seri serious. So he only regarded it as a form of discipline and did not harbor any ill intent towards them. So during this time also, because his mother is, was in abroad, he, uh, he could only cry because he misses her and felt helpless because he can't do anything about it. So he would fear that uh, her mother would not go back or won't be coming back anymore. Uh, but his mother would, uh, because his mother would seldom go, would go home uh, occasionally lang. And then usually once, once every two to three years during her vacation leave because she needed to save money also. He would be happy whenever he sees his mother, but would get sad whenever he sees her depart. So I wanted her to stay, but with the help of constant assurance from his grandmother, he understood that it was also difficult for her and needs to do it for her family. So while in school, he, would, he is the type of kid that would stay in one corner and minding his own business. He would stay silent or smile during conversations because he is uncomfortable talking with them. So some of his classmates would tease him, while others would make friends, thinking that he's funny and some and some and and someone they could easily get along with. So he had good grades in school and considered himself as more of a follower. So he seldom joins extracurricular activities such as sports unless it is required or he is directly assigned to it. There were no episodes wherein he would easily get distracted during conversation, losing focus during tasks, inability to stay still in the seat, and other symptoms of inactivity, hyperactivity, and impossibility. So he was toilet trained at the age of three. Uh, and, and whenever he would soil his undergarments, his grandmother would verbally remind him. So we did not have any temper tantrums, head bumping, or any other conduct problems. So after graduating in elementary, <clears throat> he proceeded as a grade seven student at their local high school. So he still had good grades in his academics, but the night before, he slowly started to come out of his comfort zone. So he started to initiate conversations with his classmates, but whenever he's uncomfortable already, he would just smile as if he were joking and would casually join them whenever he's invited and joins them in playing basketball, singing karaoke, or, or just hanging out with them. It was this time that their grandparents started to become less supervising with them and at times leaving them alone to take care of themselves because they were already enough. So their eldest brother became the person of authority of the family when the adults are away. So he started to beat his younger siblings and would shout of them. So he would be punched or slapped at the back of his head whenever he could not follow his orders. So he and his, his older brother would be picked on the most uh, because they are the youngest. His fourth sibling, I mean, this caused him to be sad and felt that it was somewhat unfair being treated that way. So uh, his because of that, he started to go out with his cousins and friends to avoid situations in their house. So later, he was exposed to various substances such as alcohol, cannabis, methamphetamine, and tomato. So hanging out with them makes him feel better and relaxed as if he forgets his problems. So his mother went home uh, for good after being abroad for 15 years. 
but her focus was on her grandchildren. At times, she would be jealous because uh, they would be given toys or new things, while his requests were not immediately given because she would be told several times uh, that they have no money to spend and usually takes time before he would before it would be granted. So despite this, he did not uh, get angry with them because they are still young and he understood that they didn't, needed more attention. So he did not have any history of initiating, initiating fights, hurting animals, uh, destroyed property, stole objects, uh, or lied in order to get something for his own good. He denied of running away from home or staying of, with his friends overnight. So occupation and history was unremarkable. He was not able to work. Or, uh, and then for the religious background, he's the he devout believer uh, and grew up as a Muslim. So for the sexual identity in relationship history, so he identified himself as a male and attracted to the opposite sex. So he had history of rejection. And uh, as he tried to court one of his classmates and did not court for a few months because he is afraid of being rejected. So again, he mastered his, mastered his courage and had been in a relationship. So, but because of his um, going out with his friends, um, and he had several arguments. So he could not accompany her at times because she was she was with his friends, and but she only knew that he was drinking with them, but was not aware that he uses illicit substances such as cannabis. And then she later broke up with him at the start of his symptoms. So legal and military history were unremarkable. So this is the summary of his substance use history. So majority of the substances were taken uh, during 14 years old. And then his last intake uh, was in September 9. He only tried methamphetamine once and did not uh, uh, continue or try again afterwards. So this is the benefit of substance use of substance use to him. So physically, it makes him feel happy and relaxed whenever he's down or experiencing emotional problems. And then for it also has social benefits for him that he was able to make friends, enabled him to be more confident in handling conversations during gatherings. There were no legal, sexual, and financial benefit with substance use. So for the consequences of substance use, so he experienced of having fatigue, headache the next day after substance use. And for social consequences, he experienced uh, problems in his academics and relationships due to his recent substance use. He was not able to do his homework and broke up with his girlfriend because of it. So he denied of having any negative consequences legally sexual consequences or financial consequences. So before we proceed, I know, sorry. So for the review systems, it was unremarkable. Uh, for the COVID-19 screening, it was also unremarkable. There were no flu-like symptoms such as fever, cough, body malice. And then for the non-substance use history, uh, he did not have any history of gambling internet addiction and other, any other form of behavioral addictions. So before we continue with our mental status examination, are there any other questions or clarifications, Paul? I have a clarification, Pete. Yes, Paul. Uh, you mentioned that um, the time that he was supposed to be going to his girlfriend's house, he did not know what happened and he then uh, engaged with his friends, right? Yes, Pado. Uh, can you elaborate on that? What do you? <clears throat> what does he mean by he does not know what happened? So actually, Doc, uh, I tried asking him if, parang he lied in instead. Uh, I I I tried asking him if he really had the intent to go with his friends during that time, and then. Maybe he lied to his parents so that he will be able to go 
to parang his parang parang friend's birthday and avoid and avoid his obligations in school so that's why he parang went to his girlfriend pero sabi niya doc na uh, delikay ko sure doc kung saan itabo but he went to his friend's house instead of his girlfriend ko doc Okay, kasi, di ba, uh, when we are talking about substance use... Sorry po, Doc. Naging choppy po. Uh, one of the things that we want the patient to have is to have some in into what are the triggers have some into what are the triggers right is yes, it still that. choppy uh, parang ang nagets ko lang doc is for on prior to the substance use they, they there are associated triggers po na makagamit siya yeah uh, we, yes, we want him to have some insight right into yes, yes. um uh uh so yes, with with that particular incident, it would have been good to really explore what does he mean by niya alam what happened. Yeah, yes, Was it a dissociative episode? It doesn't seem to be so, right? Yes, my dog. Okay. Yes, my dog. So, so parang, yes, you can go back to that specific incident. Uh oh, uh oh. Yes, my dog. Into the details of how you know he it it went from. Um, going to his girlfriend supposedly to uh, using substances. Yes, yes, but no. You step by step there. Okay. Uh, eh, yes, but no. Thank you, but no. So, uh, in this patient talk, it was established that uh, parang may parang response of na stress, whenever he's stressed, whenever he's down, parang may classical conditioning na na parang substance use is associated with parang uh, with friends at the same time whenever may operant conditioning we're in kapag uminom siya or would take cigarettes and others uh, his feelings yung mga negative emotions siya would feel okay but I failed to explore more on the reason why Nung 15 days ago na bakit nakasama siya sa girlfriend it might, might be parang din, parang he is not open up with regards to it though kasi this is the start of his parang symptoms talaga na his uh, substance use uh, increased po though. thank you po okay Pete how about that uh, yung other um, episodes that were in he used were were there any specific also na aside from peer pressure? Mm, yes, yes, but uh, actually, doc, he does not take uh, aside from tobacco, he does not drink or take cannabis alone, po, doc. So only during that time when he is stressed and he would stress or having problems, he would join his friends po no? Other than that, there were no any episodes na siya lang or sa mga siblings niya. Okay, uh, follow up on that. Um, when when he did not use or before he, the substance use, what was his way of coping? Yes, no. so actually, no, he, is, he would just uh, stay silent about his problems lang po no? He would keep it to himself, po, doc, because he does not want other people. Uh, he does not want to be a burden to other people, po, doc. Sa kanya lang talaga, and then solve it alone. And then later on, uh, parang substance kasi doc is para naging avenue in connecting with other people. So dun siya maka voice out of his concerns, doc. Okay, but aside from you know keeping it to himself, what were his other ways? Because he must have solved problems before the substance yes, yes, use, right? Yes, uh -oh. yes, so how how did he do that? 
parang more on if you look more on avoidance for okay and then more on diverting if he's very stressed in parang problems for the he would uh, do something as mga basketball mga and other activities to do okay. para so he he does have diba he does have ways of um kumaga stress reliever that are yes, healthier right yes, sports yes, um etc etc so yeah okay sige I'll, I'll ask more on that later on in your management okay. yes, well. so if there are no other questions so let's proceed with the mental status examination so he was brought in by his mother uh, on the outpatient department so he had a tall stature as a medium build and looks appropriate for his for his age so he was fairly groomed has a wavy hair and trim nails, so he was partially cooperative during the interview. He does not smell of alcohol and has slightly dark lips and yellowish teeth. So he had a eutymic mood with constricted affect. So he denied of him any sleep disturbances, he denied of any appetite or weight changes, and there were no differences in for the diurnal variations. So there were no changes in his libido. He has a fair intention, although some questions needs to be repeated before he can answer. So he spoke, speaks spontaneously with a moderately loud volume and tone. And then he denies any perceptual disturbances and there were no uh, observed hallucinatory gestures during the interview. He would answer questions tangentially at times. And then he believed that they are oppressed and unjustly treated by their tribe leader or I mean uh, imam or something. I was not really able to understand their parang culture then then okay. Pero yun parang pagkaintindi ko sa kanila. And then he is oriented to person, place, and time. He has impaired immediate memory. He was not able to. He was only able to answer two out of the three objects told to him. And then for the serial subtraction, he was slightly inattentive and then unable to immediately understand the instruction. It was repeated two to three times before he could answer. Nevertheless, he was able to perform serial subtraction. So he is able to spell a five-letter word and it's reverse. He is able to think abstractly and able to interpret the proper time is rule. So he had impaired social judgment wherein he was not able to know the consequences of his actions. But he, is, although he has partial insight then to his condition. He came in here to be treated because of parang his beliefs na somewhat odd before. Po. And then for the physical examination, it was gener generally unremarkable. So aside from having a hyper pigmented lips, medyo dark dark, and or parang yellowish teeth. Um, uh, kana sa, sa cigarette hill, it nicotine stains. Uh, other PE were findings were unremarkable for dog. So for the salient features, this is a 17 years old male and adolescent, a grade 11 student. So he had early exposure and influence to psych psychoactive substances and he, there was maternal stress during pregnancy. He had no previous consultation. His mother has uh, anxiety symptoms and then substance use in the family. So this caused impaired control, social impairment, risky use and withdrawal and craving in our patient. And then he experienced mood, perceptual and thought disturbances. For the mental status examination, so he had impaired immediate memory and impaired, impaired uh, judgment. So for the impression of this case, so for the DSM 5 tr would be substance induced psychotic disorder, alcohol and cannabis with ICD equivalent of substance induced psychotic disorder also. And then fully substance use disorder severe for both for kana alcohol, cannabis, and tobacco, and then unspecified stimulant related disorder, methamphetamine in admission, and then with ICD equivalent of 
single episode of harmful use or psychoactive substance, methamphetamine in remission. And then major depressive disorder with ICD equivalent of single episode depressive disorder, and then social anxiety disorder. So for my differential diagnosis, I divided this into psychotic disorders, substance related and addictive, addictive disorders, mood disorders, anxiety disorders, neuro neurodevelopmental disorders, disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders. Now let's talk about this like with psychotic disorders. So I consider this before because uh, it is common in younger individuals, 20, 20 to 30 years of age, and those experiencing low socioeconomic status and major psychological stressors. However, the symptom seems to start after having some stand use. Hence, uh, this was ruled out. Next would be a mood disorder. So for the major depressive disorder, it is more prevalent in women and then usually the mean onset would be 40 years old and between to 20 to 50 years of age. So they may, it is common in, parang they may have comorbidities such as substance anxiety disorders and other disorders. And then men more are likely to have comorbid alcohol and substance use in which our patient is a male adolescent. And then he had multiple use of substances and then an anxiety disorder or social anxiety disorder. So I ruled this in because he was able to fulfill the criteria of MDD. Next, and then next would be persistent depressive disorder, uh, wherein it is, there's no gender differences in incidence. It is more common in women, uh, less than 60 years old and married and young individuals with low income. So it also coexists with other mental disorders. So uh, he had a history of multiple substance use in major depressive disorder and anxiety disorders. So although he was, was not really able to fulfill the criteria for EDD, uh, unable to complete the criteria for the but and then his symptoms are more pronounced than one year prior to, but I need to consider this also. This might be a uh, persistent depressive disorder with intermittent MDD episodes wherein um, because of the substance use more on namamask lang in depression yet and also. So next would be social anxiety disorder. So it is um, prevalence is roughly half of adults and adolescent ages. So the common is at 12 to 17 years old of age also parang higher prevalence and it is equally prevalent or slightly higher in, in men. So, so in our patient, uh, he has marked fear, anxiety in so see, see social situations because uh, he has afraid of being scrutinized by others, being observed and parang performing in front of them. So he, he fears that he would be negatively evaluated and then social situation would always provoke fear or anxiety to him. He tries to avoid or endure social situations, especially uh, an example in his parang gatherings nila during parang uh, substance use with his friends. So despite being parang swayed several times, he's uncomfortable because he, is, he does not want to, he feels embarrassed. Oh, but because of substance use, parang na niya. And then he fears, uh, parang, or his, his fears or anxiety is out of proportion to the actual threat that it posed. And the fear, anxiety, or avoidance is persistently and typically lasting for more than six months. And then it causes distress or impairment in social, occupational, other areas of functioning. Hence, I told this in. Next would be intellectual disability for the neurodevelopmental disorders. So although uh, in children, it is usually not identified until their first or second grade and in adolescents, usually at their sixth grade. So although he has no history of academic difficulties and there were no problems in academic functioning, 
also because I was not able to see his report cards kasi because the mother was not able to provide during that time. And then he has impaired judgment or uh, gullibility to substance use might be a deficit in intellectual function. Kaya he would be easily swayed. However, there were impairment of other cognitive domains. This patient such as uh, abstract thinking, academic learning, and others. And then for this patient, this is uh, for now, this, this is for further exploration because uh, I need to have standardized intelligence testing for this patient. So next would be at this um, uh, disruptive impulse control and conduct disorders. So however, um, it is common in it, it right its prevalence rise from childhood to adolescence, and then usually they would have they would have comorbid with other conditions such as learning, uh, depression, bipolar, anxiety, and substance disorders. Uh, although um, there in his in his condition, um, this he was able to fulfill the criteria for a serious violation of rules. So. Usually, he would stay at night uh, in order parang to go out with his friends. It might be parang a form of deceitfulness also, but he was not uh, able to meet the other criteria such as aggression towards people and animals, destruction of property. Oh. And then, I was not able to place here ADHD also. In the case in my PowerPoint presentation, by all, but I also consider this uh, because it is prevalent in children, mga 7.2 percent, and it is more frequent in males, two is to one, and then it has comorbidities such as oppositional defined disorder, autism spectrum, personality and substance use disorder. But he was not; he had no history of being inattentive has hyperactivity or impulsivity. Hence, I eventually ruled it out also. Next would be the substance-related and addictive disorders. I considered uh, substance-induced psychotic disorder, mainly alcohol and cannabis, uh, because in alcohol, although it is rare, uh, in in 3%, it only occurs in 3% in heavy drinking, and they would have auditory or persecutory delusions, or auditory hallucinations or persecutory delusions. And then for cannabis, it is also rare, but may develop shortly after high doses of usage. So it presents with persecutory delusions, marked anxiety, emotional ability, and then the personalization. So in substances, uh, in psychoactive substances, uh, this the perceptual disturbances may develop within hours to a few days, and then usually resolves in less than a week, but may remit longer in some cases. So this patient develop uh, mga psychotic episodes during heavy use of substances for the 15 days prior to consult. So he presented with delusions and hallucinations, and then he had history of parang psychoactive substances. And then the temporality of symptoms were consistent after using substance use. Hence, I ruled this in. And then polysubstance use disorder, alcohol, cannabis to be because, uh, because it is common in males or men, usually mid-20s. It has a genetic influence and it is common in all socioeconomic classes. It has comorbid with other psychiatric conditions, but um, higher prevalence in patients with schizophrenia. So, my patient, this is a male adolescent with substance use in the family. And then he had uh, depression and then anxiety. So, he took it in a larger amounts. And then there is parang unsuccessful efforts to cut down. There is craving or strong desire. Uh, for the substances, this caused a failure to fulfill major obligations at work, uh, social or interpersonal problems that it caused, and then 
some social or recreational activities are given up because of substance use. And uh, because he would be drinking at night also late na, and then he is an adolescent. So he is drinking it in a physically hazardous situation. And then there is uh, withdrawal in, in our patient. And I rolled this in. Are there any other questions for Doc before presenting my psychodynamic formulation? Uh, what what else? Uh, aside from those differentials, meron kang isa, I don't know kung na-mention mo. Uh, ang na-mention ko po Doc is ID, conduct, and ADHD po Doc. Oh, na-roll out mo siya? Ay, yes, yes po Doc, yes po Doc. Hindi ko lang nalagay yung ADHD na na slide po doc sa PowerPoint ko po. You have a 17 year old male, no, who is known to be reclusive, avoidant, no, shy, yes, and no. then three years before started to deteriorate. Yes, pa doc. So what else? Ano yung common sa ganitong age group na yung premorbid personality na the usual na ano mabait tahimik and you, you, see, you see this often sa ano sa IPBM Person mga personality doc so it's all no. 17 years old po doc no have you considered ano prodromal symptoms of schizophrenia mm. or uh, pre psycho pre ano schizophrenia for this patient no um, deteriorate siya and trying to cope by using drugs um, may family history ba to of schizophrenia wala wala po doc but have you considered that for this patient uh, na, no po no po doc na catch mo lang siya prior to the first episode ng yeah, yes, but no. Actually, so wala now po. and then we see people na schizo people with schizophrenia na mayroong comorbid na either alcohol, nicotine, or methamphetamine use. Okay. You should consider it, no? A parang provisionary na diagnosis. No, uh, right now hindi mo siya ma ma diagnose, but it's only through retrospective na you will parang ret you will know. Or later pa, no, through follow-ups, no, kung mag-develop siya ng schizophrenia. Usually, ano ba yung age of onset ng schizophrenia? Mga, kung doc, mga ganitong age group din po, doc. O, kay kailan sila nag-start mag, ano, mag-deteriorate? Kailan sila mag-present ng mga prodromal symptoms? Ano, what are the prodromal symptoms of schizophrenia? Usually, mga kung doc, eh, nag parang negative symptoms, doc, na... Parang nagiging aloof, nag-decrease ng socialization po, doc, sa oh. patient. So just like your patient, no? Mayroong mga anhedonia, no? Pero we could not for sure, ano, no? May, mayroong mga social anxiety. Sometimes it present with depression, no? Na it, it could be parang akala mo depression, pero yun pala, anhedonia pala yun, yung negative symptoms pala ng schizophrenia. They present with problems with focus. No, they are gullible because yun madaling ma ano mauto ng mga kaibigan. Yes, so you, you see that often no sa mga patients natin. I'm not saying na ano but you should consider it na ano siya yung prodromal symptoms. It's just that you you catch him na at the peak. Maaga mo lang siyang nakita. And then yung reason ng Pagdala is the substance use. Yes, Pado. Thank you, Pado. Okay, Pete, why oh. is it important to uh, kumbaga, consider that? Yung sinabi ni Dr. Gonzalez. Even though, you know, right now, hindi naman natin siya mafit into the criteria of schizophrenia, but why is it important kaya for us? More on... On, Doc, uh, 
if it is early recognized po doc so mapansa doc ma mas early din ang management tools or din natin po doc oh oh no and and that could also help us with regards to psychoeducation um uh frequent follow ups no and that can also help us na it's, it's one of the things we would want to avoid um and could be a motivating factor to stop substances as well yes po doc okay yes po doc thank you po doc yung mga dissociative meron ba siyang dissociative episodes or what is uh, it related yung sa substance use niya actually wala akong ma-elicit na ganun po doc eh so yung yung like napunta siya sa girlfriend niya ano ba yun yeah. ano ba nangyari doon <laughs> sige doc uh, i think i will i feel to explore more on that po doc eh. doc eh. so it might be a dissociative episode doc or baka meron siyang parang tinatago also baka parang galay lang siya para ang but the his intent was going with his friends or baka dissociative episode po yun doc na hindi niya alam na nakapunta po lang siya doon kasi minsan no pag mga prodrome ng schizophrenia no naghalusinate sila they don't know na hallucination pala yun and they will tell you na wala silang hallucination and it's only later no after like a few or many follow ups na you will recognize na or ma-educate sila na meron pala silang hallucination or yung anxiety nila is hindi pala yun anxiety it's actually paranoia no mayroong mga area na ganun eh ang hirap i kung sa simula hirap i delineate no akala mo social anxiety pero yun pala ano pala yun ideas of reference or may feeling na pinapag-usapan sila ng mga tao pero sa kanila they would say na ano or parang the way pagka-communicate akala mo ano social anxiety no so parang pag mga ganyan na like the usual na yun mabait tahimik tapos naga slowly deteriorate no yung unang isipin mo is ano eh yung schizophrenia yes, so, po so, pag mga ano da kasi you see that di ba sa mga karaniwan mga pasyente natin na nag-admit pag tingin mo na ano y- ano yung premorbid personality niya ah, ano man yan doc mabait yan I, ano yan siya sa mga kapatid niya, tahimik lang, no, or kuan. Pero siguro, ano, tingnan natin, maybe, I don't know, a year or two, or il, ano, kasi yes, usually but, naman, pag first episode, then not to treat, then madaling maging okay, but in the long run, nagiging pronounced yung negative symptoms nila, and then they will have many episodes. And it's only through later na makikita mo na it's really ano pala, schizophrenia. But you have to manage both. Schizophrenia and also the substance use disorder at the same time. Oh, important yung education. Kasi yes, with the substance use, it will unmask, it will ano, unmask greatly the mag, ano talaga yung ano niya, schizophrenia. So, anong yes. common sa schizophrenia na comorbid na substance use? Mga nicotine daw. Nicotine, nicotine. alcohol. Yes. Oh, nicotine, alcohol, cannabis, methamphetamine. Okay. Yes, pa daw. Pete, before we move on, I noticed kasi you mentioned that... Uh, the patient, you are not sure if uh, maybe the patient is hiding something. When we are interviewing patients, um, wherein we, we, we want to elicit a good history, a good substance use history, what are the techniques that we can apply to uh, increase the reliability? And, uh, more on... parang asking them na parang in a non-judgmental way po doc na tapos hindi parang confrontational about their substance use po doc ba uh, asking as it is lang na 
and then using open ended questions follow and then and you must yes doc sa motivation interviewing okay okay so, like um will you be mentioning like for example symptom expectation uh mga ganun exaggerating uh, or expecting a you know a, a large amount para hindi ma uh, ang pay yeah sa, sa kanila doc is so possible is nagmi-minimize sila doc eh majority of patients so how do we uh, how do we avoid that para hindi mag-minimize yung patient natin kwan doc uh, more on philip at si parang establishing a uh, parang therapeutic alliance no i i'm, I'm thinking for... of a particular way of asking sige i'll give that siguro if it's not part of your um um objectives sige, ano, naman doctor nothing But... yung mga first year <laughs> ay nagano ka na dito doc <laughs> nagano ya oh <laughs> na discuss na pala ni Dr. Gonzales. Sige, Dr. Tating, please answer. Normalize about substances, okay. Okay, that's one. What else? Sino yung nag didactic report nito? Dr. Tating ba yun or Dr. Roldan? baka si mix do but still they were there so dapat ma-answer din nila <laughs> sige I'll, i'll um in the interest of time i'll give it as an assignment yeah. or you can post Hello, it in the chat also ha good, I, good morning po doc yes go ahead al uh, to uh, norm, normalizing technique po doc okay what else Um, it's important talk now during the interview doc we are non-judgmental we are able to uh, okay that was mentioned or, naman na uh, yes, like for doc. example kasi the body can minimize the symptoms so uh the minimize the amount used so how can we ask it in a way na hindi hindi sila makakapag minimize so like for example nicotine use Diba? We, what do you call if you ask the patient, mga pila ka packs ka ha? Mga tulok ka packs sa isa ka adlaw? Uh, uh, doc, um, during the interview, Doc, uh, you, are, you must be able to parang exaggerate to Doc yung, yung, yung pag-ask mo if the, if the patient is ka lang. Uh, example, Doc, uh, uh, if the patient is taking uh, three packs of of uh, smoking dog even if now the patient uh, we know the patient is only uh, taking only one pack food dog but so in a way dog parang ma open up yung patient dito ka it can be uh, honest with uh with these answers food dog oo so kasi we have to know these techniques para yun nga yung minimization yung pag uh, deny ng mga substance use They won't feel the need to do that. Okay? Sige. Sige pa daw. Thank you po. Continue. So for my biopsychosocial biopsycho per formulation, so we are presented with a, with a case of Chris, a 17-year-old male who experienced negative childhood adversities, had poor social skills, and maladaptive coping. He turned into psychoactive substances to make himself feel better and an avenue to connect with other people. So several biological factors have, has been identified, such as generic, like, generic, genetic uh, vulnerabilities, affected and substance use, uh, separation and stranger anxiety, maternal stress during pregnancy, and early, activity, early exposure to psychoactive substances. So in turn, Uh, this would lead to epigenetic changes leading to permanent uh, structural and biologic alterations, especially to a developing child in which the brain has peak neuroplasticity. So his parents were, were frequently fighting even during the time he was under her mother's womb. She was stressed as her husband had another relationship without her knowledge. 
So he had no say about it because it was the norm of the religion. They eventually separated and lived in different houses. A few and a few months after he was born, so it, he was eight months old during that time. So his father was there from time to time, but his presence was not enough and he was not able to fulfill his role as the family's pillar of support. His father's financial support grew less and was insufficient to feed two families, causing their mother to work as their fin to work. So as their financial burden grew, she worked overseas and left them under the care of her grandparents and relatives. So she would occasionally go home during vacation, leave, but most of the time she was not there in important events of his life. So this led to the development of an incomplete sense of self wherein mirroring, twinship, and idealizing transferences was poorly developed. So his mother uh, was not able to attend his needs when she was away, causing poor development of mirroring, mirroring transferences. So she was not able to act as a mirror to reflect back a sense of self-worth and value. So while his father was unreliable, was not able to act as a role model for him to feel a sense of likeness and to make him calm and comfortable. Hence, twinship and idealizing transferences did not take place. So also the absent father-child uh, has no reality figure to whom he could work out and then normal age-specific competitive feelings such as fears, humiliations that a child must learn to cope may become highly distorted later on. So because of these factors, healthy narcissism did not take place due to insufficient parental empathy leading to having poor self-esteem. So unlike other kids who develop a sense of competence as they embark challenges, he grew up to be a silent and timid kind of child. So he, wish, he was initially afraid to go to school because he was afraid of his teacher. So he had self-doubt, which influenced the way he adapted to a new environment and making social relationships. So he developed inferiority, causing lack of self-confidence. This was manifested when he developed stranger and separation anxiety when he started to go in school. So despite this, he was able to push through somehow because of constant uh, reassurance from his grandparents and other relatives. So they were able to substitute his parents and able to give what they could not provide, hence nurturing his fragmented or unstable sense of self. So later on, uh, his grandparents and other relatives slowly went away when they were old, were old already to take care of themselves. And because of this, uh, they would be picked on by their elder brother. Brother, He felt he was alone and has no one to talk to, uh, hurting, causing further insult to his wounded esteem. So later he was exposed to uh, peers that engage in psychoactive substances. So he, was, he started to take alcohol, tobacco, cannabis, and tried methamphetamine also. So he found comfort in it as he felt better and became confident in handling conversation. So he used it as a self-soothing and self idealized object. However, because of the pandemic, uh, he experienced several stressful events, so his teams were disrupted, and most importantly, he was unable to see his friends. So he associated substance use of having friends, which is yung sa classical conditioning also, and then its use makes uh, himself feel better. So it became a habit wherein it, used, it is used during various negative emotional experiences, so naging operant conditioning. So these substances interact in a way causing neurochemical reactions in the brain reward system or circuitry. So this explains why uh, this explains the neurobiological and psychological aspects of substance use, wherein consumption is parallel or is increased in parallel to stress or negative emotional states. So uh, his mother eventually went home after several years uh, uh, working abroad. However, her focus on, was on her grandchildren, wherein they were given more attention. This further caused insult to him, uh, insult to his esteem by rekindling the feelings of being unloved and abandoned. So this was later re replaced with manic defenses later on, as I will tell you in my course and the words, uh, wherein 
uh, there are feelings of euphoric satisfaction and of omnipotence as a defense against his underlying depression, hence the development of mania. So in, 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 in conclusion, the substance use might be a form of self-medication in order to alleviate symptoms of anxiety, depression, and then mania also. But in our patient, uh, we are protected also. So this is a young individual with no known and, uh, comorbidities. He has uh, fair intelligence. There are no history of developmental delays. And then the psychoactive substances were uh, stopped. Na. And then he is a hardworking and responsible and uh, psychologically minded and insightful when well. And also during consult, he has improved understanding on the effects of the substance. More on contemplation to preparatory stage. And then he, actually he was able to take action and stop it totally. Talaga. So for social, for social support, uh, SPMC, IPBM, and then therapist would be as a uh, support base. And then right now, there is increased receptiveness of the family, especially to his mother. That's uh, so more on their becoming supportive, which is very important in relapse prevention in this patient also. Are there uh, questions for before I continue? Then for me. Yes, thank you for that. If there are none, uh, I'm going to uh, proceed with the course in the OPT. So these are the problem lists seen in our patient. So addressing the behavioral change due to effects of substance, cutting the accessibility and stopping the problematic substance use, addressing the significant distress and functional impairment, and strain interpersonal relationships. So the goals of treatment would be divided into short-term goals so and long-term goals long-term goals. So for the short-term goals, this would be to control and elevate uh, the symptoms of psychosis, depressive and anxiety symptoms, ensuring safety, evaluation of medical comorbidities uh, that might have precipitated or would complicate treatment, providing education of symptoms to the patient and then to the family, uh, identification of stressors and maladaptive coping and fostering a develop or fostering a healthy coping mechanism. On the other hand, for the long-term goals, monitoring residual symptoms or parang development, further development of a food disorder, uh, anticipating and dealing with stressors, cutting access and mon monitoring relapse of substance use, Ensure, ensuring social support and reintegration. So, uh, in first day of consult in September 24, uh, my impression is substance induced psychotic disorder, police substance use disorder, MD major depressive disorder, and social anxiety disorder. So, for evaluation of medical comorbidities, requested the diagnostics such as CBC, creatinine, SUPT, SUT, electrolytes, urinalysis, uh, FBS lipid profile, X-ray, ECG, thyroid panel, and drug test. Drug test revealed negative also during this time. And then for addressing psychosis due to multiple psychoactive substances in real prevention, started with vitamin C, Iolanzapine at 5 mg at bedtime, vitamin C at 1,000 mg per day, and vitamin B complex, quanta BID. For the non-pharmacologic management, motivational interviewing, supportive psychotherapy, and identification of contacts and cutting access of substances. And then for this case, uh, for referral to the psychological service for NPT, once amenable, and also during this time, um, Matas pa yung cases of COVID during this time. Also, to follow up after one week, to me. So, after one week, uh, first follow up visit. So, he was noted to be occasionally irritable and gets mad whenever he's not allowed to go to do what he wants, such as going to a motorcycle shop. So, he verbalized that he had episodes that he has lots of ideas coming from his head into his head. So he would take a bath at least twice a day and frequently uses his cellular phones. However, he could now sleep properly at night and able to sustain conversations. 
So he was seen and examined, well groomed, calm, cooperative, with a eutymic mood and constricted affect. So he had developed, he had a deliberate speech with good eye contact. So he denies any perceptual disturbances and there were no observed hallucinatory gestures. So this time he had a linear thought process. He denied any delusions, no homicidal nor suicidal thoughts. He has good orientation and impaired memory and an impaired judgment and partial insight. So, so, sorry. So my impression that time is substance induced psychotic disorder, police substance use disorder, severe, MDD, social anxiety disorder, and then rule out bipolar one disorder. So I continued olanzapine, vitamin C, and vitamin B complex, and then motivational interviewing, supportive psychotherapy, identification of contacts and access of, access of substances. So during this stage, more on sa contemplation to preparation stage, na actually he was able to understand that his substance use is the reason for his parang behavioral change during this time. So aside from this, uh, I'm going to monitor the temporality of symptoms and observing for development of uh, any of a mood disorder for this patient. So I advise to follow up after a week. And then after one week, his second follow-up visit or 29 days from first consult. So he has feelings of being sad and motivated. He has decreased socialization where he prefers to be alone. He is able to but he's still able to perform activities of daily living. He's, Ill, he's able to sleep at night, but complains of daytime drowsiness. And also, he has noted to have weight gain. So he was seen and examined, well-groomed, calm and cooperative. He had a sad mood with a profit after. So he had a deliberate speech and had uh, fair eye contact. Usually, mag, di masyado naka, terror pa to na good eye contact. He denies any perceptual disturbances. There were no observed hallucinatory gestures, although uh, he has a linear thought process, has no delusions, is oriented, has an impaired memory, and impaired judgment, partial insight. For this one, I considered major depressive disorder versus bipolar depression, social anxiety disorder, and polysubstance use disorder severe. So there were no recurrence of substance use during this time. In order to address the depressive symptoms, uh, I started uh, escitalopram at 5 milligrams per day for four days to decrease the GI side effects and then increasing to one tap thereafter. And then olanzapine was tapered down and then to be shifted to risperidone on the next follow-up. And then motiv continued your motivation inter uh, interviewing supportive psychotherapy and then sustained cessation of substance use and relapse prevention and then ruling out unipolar versus bipolar depression. After one week of follow-up, uh, third follow-up visit, it was one to two weeks after second follow-up or 36 days. So he was observed to be more cheerful than usual, restless and energetic. He goes to most other cycle shops because he wants to buy one and gets smart whenever he's not allowed. However, unlike before, he could now be pacified. He had better sleep, but observed to be waking up early in the morning and goes back to sleep thereafter. So he has improved self-care and able to do activities of daily living. So uh, he would take his medications regularly. And then on the fourth follow-up visit, which is the 43rd day, uh, he had improvement of symptoms. So on the third follow-up visit, he was seen uh, having, having an elevated mood experience elevated expansive mood in the appropriate effect. He was slightly talkative, but able to sustain eye contact. He denies any perceptual disturbances and there were no observable hallucinatory gestures. He has tangential responses at times and had an elevated esteem. Did not, he did not have any homicidal or nor any suicidal thoughts. So he has impaired mem unimpaired memory, impaired judgment, and has partial insight. So my impression during this, this time is a bipolar one disorder, social anxiety disorder, and then police substance use disorder severe. So for the pharmacotherapy, uh, escitalopram was discontinued 
and because of the weight gain also sa patient, uh, resperidone was started and also according to studies, well studied to sa children and adolescents ang resperidone in cases of bipolar bipolar disorder. So it was started as 5 milligrams per day at bedtime, which was then increased on the fourth follow-up visit after a week. So continued yung supportive psychotherapy and sustained cessation of lapse of substance use and relapse prevention. Also monitoring of symptoms and then on the fourth follow-up visit, uh, there was parang improvement of symptoms. So after monthly na yung follow-up. So for the fifth follow-up onward, so he has returned to pre-morbid state of functioning and was able to go back to school. He was compliant with medications and there were no recurrence of substance use. Uh, noted to have minimal weight gain. So he was calm and cooperative, high otimic mood, had sustained speech and had good eye contact. So he denied any perceptible disturbances. There were no Observe hallucinatory gestures as linear thought process. He's oriented to three spheres as good at concentration, attention, and fair judgment and partial skin condition. And um, my impression is bipolar one disorder, currently in remission as and then social anxiety disorder and then substance use disorder severe. So for my pharmacotherapy would be respirated on two milligrams per day, and then for the anxiety symptoms also uh, to have cognitive behavioral therapy for, for this patient and then but more on parang supportive expressive type ng psychotherapy niya for now and then fostering or sustained remission and relapse of prevention of substance use so I plan to have random drug testing during his follow-ups for, for this patient. And then this this patient is still for neuropsychological test for them. Uh, ito po yung summary of diagnostic results for this patient, which is generally unremarkable. Po. So my final diagnosis for this patient is bipolar 1 disorder, uh, social anxiety disorder, polysubstance use disorder, severe in early remission, and the disorders due to multiple psycho uh, ICD equivalent of disorders due to multiple um, psychoactive substances, mainly an alcohol, tobacco, and cannabis dependent syndrome in early remission. Are there other questions for Doc? Thank you. Thank you. So for my Okay, so for my case discussion, uh, it has been said that drug abuse has been a global problem and caused detrimental effects. So majority of the adults who have substance use disorder would start to use substances during adolescent or young adult years. So why do they use substances? So it might be out of curiosity, experimentation, due to peer pressure, uh, rebellious behavior against authority, they would have poor self-esteem. So it imp substance use impairs transition from adulthood, uh, which hampers development of critical thinking and cognitive skills. So they have reported to have higher rates of physical and mental illness and overall health and well-being uh, problems. So, the following risk factors for substance use and high-risk substance use prevention has been identified. So in our patient, for the risk factors for uh, youth high-risk substance use should be, there is more on permissive parental attitude on substance use, poor parental monitoring, parental substance use also, more on culture of parang normal lang ang alcohol and tobacco, and then delinquent or substance using peers, low, uh, and then, but although there is poor family support before, but now it's they are more getting receptive na. So there is parent or family engagement as evidenced by frequent follow-ups with his mother, and then improving family support and parental monitoring. 
So others would be parental dis disapproval of substance use and then social connectedness. So before we end, uh, let me give this uh, a quote to you. Addiction is a brain disease. So this is not a moral feeling. This is not about bad people who are choosing to continue to use drugs because they lack willpower. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. So, and plans more for this patient? <laughs> ah, for this patient, we are monitoring if there are any recurrence of substance use. But more on identification of mga stressors po like on how to approach them po doc eh. Pero for this one doc is although CBT is important, CBT is, she's, she's a uh, ideal candidate for CBT po doc kasi uh, meron siya mga negative thoughts na example when approaching friends, takot ay parang I think na baka uh, ibang isipin niya sa akin. So, para siyang maging anxious or sad siya. Parang anxious na feeling and then nag avoid siya. So, isa yun sa mga nakita ko na sa kanya doon na pandasasibiti. Pero for now, is more on I think supportive psychotherapy is parang important also para ma-foster yung esteem niya doon o maka, mas better yung adaptation ng patient mo na ngayon. Relapse prevention. Yes, Doc. Uh, yung, yung mga access of substances, Doc, yung mga friends, yung tanan, sina, ipakat na, sinabihan ko talaga mother na ikat na yung mga numbers, tanan, tanggalin na, and then actually hindi na siya pumupunta sa mga friends niya ngayon. More on, nag-focus na siya sa family niya din. Pero hindi mo niya kailangan ng... And then, <laughs> friends also for with peers your interaction <laughs> yeah yes doc but more on i think choosing the right people doc eh kay meron pa naman mga friends talaga like, doc na who do not engage in substance use to yun yung important sa kanya po doc okay so ano ha yun nga it's important also to recognize ano ba yung uh, normal for his age, no? And then, yung mga needs niya. At, at, you know, he's a 17-year-old. So, anong klase? We, we have to ensure na meron pa rin siyang mga um, age-appropriate activities, ways of engaging, socializing, and also ways that he could feel yung kanyang, um, what do you call this? Belo sense of belongingness, etc. Kasi before, di ba, this patient, Plays basketball, etc. Okay. Sige. Uh, Pete? Yes. Ano lang, non-psychotic naman siya, di ba? Yes, pa daw. Oh, tapos substance use pa yung problem mo. He's not really a good candidate for supportive psychotherapy. Oh, oh. So yes, explore, yes, oh, go beyond supportive psychotherapy that is specifically tailored for, uh, for his needs. Oh, yes, pa daw. Thank you, Father. And then, I know for me, no, you have to monitor the symptoms of the patient. No, na you have to differentiate if it's like depression or is it a negative symptom of schizophrenia. No, because there's an overlap between the two. No, the social anxiety. Nya is it really social anxiety or the beginning of a para paranoia? No, or baka usually naman after the first treatment, no, kung schizophrenia talaga to, they will have residual symptoms na ano eh, mga negative symptoms eh. And then, yan, tingnan mo, those are the things na ano mo din, aside from dong mga sinabi nila. Kasi sometimes you, maybe later pa yung pag emerge ng ano niya yung the full blown na uh, ano schizophrenia kasi magbabago yung you. treatment mo later oo so you have to from time to time you have to modify your treatment plan 
Thank you, Padok. Okay, there are no more questions or clarifications. Thank you, Dr. Santos. I also appreciated that you were able to make a temporal profile for this patient, no? Because with substance use history, mas maganda. It's clear for us to see it like that. But also with any patient for all the residents, it's very important to have a temporal profile. So if there are no more questions or clarifications, thank you everyone. For the consultants, please don't forget to fill up the evaluation form of Dr. Santos. Okay, thank you, Pete. Thank, thank you, Padok.